Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel Cantor, president of the Florida Society of Neurology. All this week we've been at the American Academy of Neurology annual meeting going around to different posters. But one of the advantages of a scientific meeting is that you run into colleagues and you get to talk about things that don't just happen at the meeting, but maybe papers that just came out. So I'm so happy to be joined by an esteemed professor of neurology, Dr. Barry Arneson at the University of Chicago, who some of you may know from all the experience we've had with interferons through the year. He's really worked hard on that, and some of us call you the grandfather of interferon. I hope there's no uh, offense to that. But you looked at, in a paper, you looked at something called ACTH, or adrenocotropic hormone. What can you tell us at home about this? What is ACTH? How do we think it works for multiple sclerosis? Well, ACTH uh, has been used uh, off and on to treat multiple sclerosis since the 1950s, so it's been around for some 60 years as a p potential treatment for MS. In the original studies, uh, ACTH uh, was viewed as a hormone that in turn turned on the production of, of steroid hormones from the adrenal gland. And uh, ACTH was largely replaced by giving cortisone or cortisone-like drugs uh, rather than ACTH in as much as ACTH did turn on cortisone production. However, in more recent years, it's become clear that ACTH has multiple additional actions beyond its effect on, on, on steroid production and that there are in fact five different receptors for ACTH, only one of which has anything to do with steroid hormones. And the other effects of ACTH are of particular interest in terms of their effect on the immune system and in turning off some of the activated aspects of the immune system. And of course, in multiple sclerosis, the immune system is overactive at times of MS attacks. And there is persistent overactivity within the substance of the brain itself in patients with later stage MS who have slow worsening over the years. And ACTH has direct effects on the cells that do this, that sort of damage, totally independent of any of its effects on steroid hormones, so that it uh, has mechanisms of action that have only recently come to be appreciated and that uh, suggest that when it is used to treat MS, that it does things that steroids don't do. And of course, steroids do things that ACTH doesn't do. But ACTH, of course, turns on steroids so that, that that effect of steroids is present when ACTH is given, plus additional effects that, uh, that may well translate into a, a better benefit, at least in some patients, than with steroids alone. Okay, well, so basically what we're understanding is from work you're doing and work other people are doing is that ACTH is more than just a way to turn on steroids. It also has other effects, and some of those other effects may actually be very important in multiple sclerosis, and we're going to keep learning about them more in the future. Yeah, in addition to the effects that ACTH has on the immune system, <clears throat> it also has effects on the nervous system itself, and it improves alertness and uh, and. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, seems to have uh, beneficial effects on nervous system function, the direct, direct effects that are an additional potential bonus effect of the treatment. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for explaining what sometimes sounds like a complicated issue. Thank you. Okay.